Shalom. Before I begin this video, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Rahawah Kakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that still to this very day continue to rule very well. And Shalom to the whole elect that's uh, continually plowing in his work, that's uh, spreading his ministry and his gospel to the other members of the Hofi Lek and our faith, truth, sincerity. Shalom. Now, uh, the topic of this video is uh, going to be centered around uh, a question that was uh, posed, posed to me uh, <clears throat> outside of the, the YouTube medium concerning uh, Revelations, the 8th chapter, you know, and basically um, wanted me to go go into Revelation 8 chapter and um, Lord's will uh, this is broken down thoroughly so that the, the brother that asked the question is uh, uh, thoroughly uh, edified alright in which if you go into the, the Revelation 8 chapter you know uh, specifically you know, it, it keeps bringing up the part where it speaks about uh, the third part of the waters, third part of trees, in which there's a reason why that scripture goes into uh, the third part of something. That's because it's going to uh, a particular division of men. All right. Because really the whole chapter is uh, going into or should I say is also going into the the destruction of this place which is uh, America which is known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures okay and uh, like I said before Lord's will uh, the brother that asked this question is thoroughly edified by this video you know just want to go ahead and jump right into it this is uh, the book of Revelations, the eighth chapter. And start from the top. I'm going to read through the whole chapter and break it down. Now, this is starting at verse uh, one. It says, uh, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before the Most High, and to them uh, were given seven trumpets. Verse 3 said, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. All right. Now, uh, the part where it speaks about the prayers of the saints, which are upon the golden altar. That's the prayers and the supplication sent to our Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai for the the wickedness and the oppression that goes on here on the soils of America. Okay. Now I want to grab a precept that explains that, man. Alright, now um uh, It's like it bear me for a second. So I changed the fifth chapter. Starting at the fourth verse. See it straight to the point. It says, Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, in which that word Sabaoth going to uh armies all right that's what that word sabbath oath means all right so that lets you know once again that the lord is a man of war all right so the cries of the laborers right which is us all right have entered to the ears of our lord also if you go into the book of uh, ezekiel the ninth chapter and the fourth verse it speaks about the ones that sigh and cry for all the abominations that's done in the midst thereof all right, so as we sigh and cry in this society that we that we reside in, man, 
the sign and crying it has has entered into the ears of our Lord. All right. So whenever we've grown in the spirit, which is uh, continually, you know, Lord has observed that. All right. And, he, and he's taken that into account. OK. Now I want to go back to um, Revelations, the eighth chapter, the fourth verse again. It's in the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints and sent it up before the most high out of the angel's hand. And the angel, verse 5, and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. All right. So that same angel took the censer, right, filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. All right. Now, that's the result of the prayers that are sent up to the Heavenly Father, because as we continually sigh and cry, the Lord takes account of that and the judgment that is to be set. Because of, of the of the continual cries that, that are entered to the ears of our Lord, is the destruction of this place, uh, America, which Babylon the Great in the Scriptures, by way of fire. Okay. And which not only is it uh, going to be by thermonuclear fire, which is also speaking about and spoken about in the Scriptures, but it's also going to be brought about by our Lord Yahweh Shai, whom these people inwardly call Jesus, in which He's going to come back. With his own brand of fire. All right. Which uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring that out real quick. All right, it's Isaiah, the 66th chapter, in the uh, 15th verse. It says, for behold, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. See, this is the, the precept to show you that our Lord is also coming back with his own brand of fire, man, with the chariots that he's going to uh, bring back. Or should I say the army of chariots that he's, he's going to bring back with him, man? Okay. Uh, verse 16 says, For by fire and by his sword, with the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai shall be many. Okay. Now, remember that I just read that. Okay, because I'm going to come back. I'm going to reference that, that precept again. Okay. Now, going back down to verse. Uh, Verse 5 again it says, And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Alright? So right here in the scripture it says, Oh, and there's also an earthquake as well, man. And this is going into the great earthquake, which is spoken about in the book of Revelation, the eleventh chapter. Alright, which uh, you know, I previously did, did a video on it concerning that great earthquake and that great earthquake. Is going into the destruction. All right. Uh, uh, it's like it. Uh, it's Revelation the eleventh chapter, and the thirteenth verse is to put this to the point. It says, "In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake was slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted." And gave glory to the most high of heaven. Okay. So this is the great earthquake that's this is the same earthquake that's spoken about in, in the book of Revelation, the eighth chapter. Alright. About that being thunderings and lightnings and a great earthquake. Okay. And which the tenth part of the city is talking about America. Alright. And the men that were slain, which is us which is seven thousand. Alright. And which that's not talking about exactly 7,000 men being slain. This is talking about an innumerable amount of people that to be slain. All right. Why is that? Because the number seven uh, in numerology is completion. Okay. So it's going to be a whole lot more than 7,000, man. If you take the number seven and, and which is completion, right? And you times that by a thousand, you're going to get 7,000, man. You know, so that's basically an, an, an innumerable, innumerable amount of people to be slain here on, um, the soils of America. Okay. Now, uh, I want to go back to Revelation 8 chapter. 
uh, verse 6, it says, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part, and here comes the, the part where it speaks about the third part. It says, uh, And the third part of the trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. All right. Because uh, the part where it says there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, this is represent representing the uh, the thermonuclear missiles to be shot over here to the soils of America. All right, which is going to cause the deaths of of thousands upon thousands of people. Okay. And the part where it says the the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. Now this. I want to grab a, a quick precept for uh, let's see. I'm gonna go back a, a chapter. This is uh, Revelation, the uh, seventh chapter, in the uh, first verse. It says, "And after these things, I saw uh, four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree." All right. So those four angels. Are holding back the destruction of this place, America, and other parts of the world. Okay. Verse two and said, I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power, which is that same seal which um, I spoke about, or that I mentioned concerning um, or oh, like I, I don't think I mentioned it, but it's in that same chapter in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, in the fourth fourth verse, where it says, "Are uh, the men that sign cry?" In which there was a mark that was set upon the foreheads of the men that sign cry. All right. In which that mark is a mark of an exemption from judgment. Okay. So I'll read verse 2 again. It says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. Okay, so that represents this truth. All right, that's the seal that's to be uh, put upon the 144,000, the elect. Because this is this the same uh, precept or the same chapter is going to the election, which is 12,000 out of each tribe of the nation of Israel. Okay. Now I want to jump back to Revelation the eighth chapter. I'm gonna read that same verse again. Uh, verse 7 said, And the first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. All right. Now, uh, verse 8, it says, And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. All right. Now, I want to grab another precept, right? Oh, it's like you. This is uh, Revelation the 17th chapter, all right? Because it mentioned in the the great mountain that uh, was cast into the sea, and the sea became blood. Now, this, this is a uh, representation of the sea. Okay, and this is uh, Revelation the 17th chapter and the 15th verse saying, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Okay? So the waters, all right, represents the people. Okay? In which it speaks about the sea because that's a, that's a phrase that's used. Uh, in today's society known as a sea of people okay now I want to jump back to um, Revelation 8 chapter once again at the 8th um, verse and the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood. So we just read that the waters represents the people, right? But this one is talking about the third part of the sea. Okay. 
Now, I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video about uh, a, 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 a division of men, right? In which there are uh, three classifications of men that are here on the planet Earth, all right? You have the sons of men, all right, the sons of men. You have the sons of the Most High. And you also have the sons of the wicked. Okay? Now, I'm going to get that real quick. Um... Uh, Now, there's the book of uh, Genesis, the uh, sixth chapter. And I'm going to start at the first verse. It says, and it, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of the Most High, or which the sons of the Most High back then before, they were known as uh, the nation of Israel. You had a line that was chosen by the Heavenly Father to... Uh, to be near unto uh, the heavenly father Yahweh, and that line came through Adam alright and then it stemmed all the way down to Abraham alright then unto Isaac and then unto Jacob alright so therefore in today's world The sons of the Most High are the Israelites. All right? Through that chosen lineage, that righteous lineage, should I say. Okay? Now, Rena says that when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of the Most High saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. All right? So the daughters of men, or in other words, the sons of the Most High saw the daughters of men, which represents the other nations. All right, and they took them in for, uh, for wives, man. Okay. Now in this chapter, it speaks about the sons of men and the daughters of men. All right. Or the sons of the Most High and the daughters of men. So like you. There's another classification of, of men, which is uh, the sons of the wicked. Okay, in which the lineage of the sons of the wicked went through uh, Cain alright and then it stemmed all the way down to Esau which is today the so called white man alright that's the true biblical nationality and the sons of the most high through the lineage all the way down to uh, Jacob are the so called Negroes Hispanics and Native Americans which makes up the 12 tribes of Israel okay so there you have the sons of the Most High, the sons of men, which is the other nations once again, and then you have the sons of the wicked. Okay. Now I want to go back to uh, Revelations, the eighth chapter. Start at the eighth verse again. It says, "And uh, the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood." Now that great mountain, and I'm gonna get it real quick. Because that great mountain, which was cast into the sea and which made this, the third part of the sea become blood, that's the representation of our Lord returning on what these people so uh, called uh, a so-called UFO, which really is a, is a chariot of the of the Most High, chariot of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, in which our Lord is going to return on, man. Now, this is uh, the book of Second Ezra, the 13th chapter, which goes into that. Okay? Now, I'm going to get straight to the point. Now, it's at verse 6, it says, But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain, and flew upon it, all right, which that mountain represents uh, a chariot, man, all right, which this chariot in particular is going to be the, the biggest chariot out of all the ones that's going to return with the Lord, man, okay? Verse 7 said, but I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not, because um, that's the thing about the vocabulary of a mountain, right? Which is not literally talking about a mountain Because back then the, the men That were in the ancient world Had a limited vocabulary They don't they didn't have the same vocabulary and terminology That we We, we, uh, we have today Okay They can only say So much to describe uh, What they were seeing Okay 
Now to go back, Revelation 8 chapter once again, and now we're at the ninth verse. It says, in the third part of the creatures which were in the sea, it's that third part again, which is that third part is the sons of the wicked, which were in the sea and had life died. Okay. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. All right. Verse 10. This is the destruction of uh, the so-called white man, Esau. Okay. And his armies, which he's going to try and fight against the Lord, but he's not going to prevail. Okay. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And um, it's like, it. and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. All right, now I want to look at that word Wormwood. All right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you look at the word Wormwood, it's just going to say a star that fell, which is the name Wormwood. It's not going to give you that much info concerning this word. Right, which is uh, the Greek word for wormwood is a uh, absinthion, right? Which means uh, wormwood, which, like I said before, wormwood, not going to give you that much info on it. It says the name of a star which fell into the waters and made them bitter. Okay? Now, like I said before, it's not going to give you the, you know, more info than this. But all it says is that it made the waters bitter. Now, if you go into the word uh, bitter, let's see, uh, all the way down the bottom. So this word bitter, right, is uh, picrano, right? It means uh, to make bitter, all right, to produce a bitter taste in the stomach. Uh, to embitter, exasperate, render, render angry, all right? indignant to be embittered irritated to visit with bitterness to grieve deal bitterly with all right now if you go down to the Thayer's Greek lexicon and, and this is <laughs> this is a little info I want to bring out uh, down at uh, the first uh, definition it says properly to make bitter uh, passive uh, to produce a bitter taste in the stomach now in parentheses look what they got here a miracle all right, this is where you get the name Amerigo by in, um, in which Amerigo Vespucci, which is the actual person in which this place was named after. That's why this place, America, named after Amerigo Vespucci, goes back to the word uh, um, Amerigo, which means what? Bitter. Okay. To produce a bitter taste. And also, there's a this definition where it says render angry, right? Or indignant or indignant, right? To be embittered or irritated. I want to grab a quick precept since we now we finished with this word uh bitter. And we got we got the definition of the word bitter, which means uh which go back to the word uh America, right? Into uh to render angry or to be irritated, right? Now um It's uh, Bab it's like it's, um, Babylon. It's uh, Jeremiah, the, the 51st chapter in the seven verses that Babylon have been the golden cup in the Lord, Yahweh by Shemuel Shai's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken over a wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. All right. So that's the <laughs> that wine represents uh, this philosophy and then the way the ways of America. Which also is a representation of, of the waters of America as well, man, because um, the scriptures, you know, which is the complete opposite of what America was, was founded on, uh, the scriptures is known as living waters, all right, which the living waters represents this knowledge that we receive by Yahweh by Shemuel al Shai, okay? But the waters of Babylon, which also is attested to, to the wine, is uh, the ways of America, right? In which the nations have drunk of that wine, all right? Therefore, the nations are what? Mad, all right? 
And we just read earlier in the definition where it says to render angry or irritated. So the nations are angry and irritated of America. That's why in the coming future, very soon, this place is going to be demolished by the hands of of uh, the nations. And then Yahushai is also going to add fuel to the fire, so to speak. <laughs> All right. Now I want to go back to Revelation the eighth chapter. Uh, since we're done with that, we're done with that verse. Verse twelve, it said, "And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, all right, which that goes into uh, the sun, and the moon being darkened, right? And the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Okay. Now I want to grab another quick precept." Uh, It's, uh, let's see, it's like here. It's a uh, book of Joel, the second chapter. And um, actually, it's like it. Let me. Uh, right, it's Isaiah, the thirteenth chapter. Should I say this? This should. Uh, this should go. Uh, or this should 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 bring it out more thoroughly. Uh, this is Isaiah the thirteenth chapter in the ninth verse it said, Behold, the day of Yahweh Bashimel Shai cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Verse 10 For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth, and the moon shall not cause our light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. All right. So this is going to the to the day of uh, destruction. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab another ple uh, a precept, which I wanted to get earlier. It's uh, Joel the second chapter in the second verse. It says, uh, as I'm starting verse one, it says, uh, blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh Yahweh Bashemel Shai for it is near at hand a day of darkness and of gloominess a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the sun as the morning spread upon the mountains a great people and the strong there have not been ever the like neither shall there be any more after it even to the years of many generations that's going to the thermonuclear destruction by, the, by way of uh, the ICBM missiles okay Now uh, to go back, Revelation the eighth chapter, and um, start at the thirteenth verse, it says, "And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound.' All right, which those three woes, if you go into the word woe, it means uh, destruction. Okay." And specifically, there are three. All right, so this is going to the World War. All right, World War One. Then you have World War Two, and then soon, World War Three is 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 on the horizon, man. World War Three is almost here, man. Okay. So, in the last coming war, which is World War Three, is going to be the the start of the end. Of this place, which is known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures, which is America. All right, and the downfall of the kingdom of the of the sons of the wicked, who are what? Or, or, or who are they? The Edomites, which are who? The so-called white man. All right. So that pretty much wraps up the this this video concerning Revelation the eighth chapter. Uh, Lord's will I, I broke this down uh, Thoroughly for the The brother that is watching You know to ask the question And also uh, Lord's will This was edifying To the body of Yahweh Bashim Yal Shai as well uh, To the members of, hope, of the Hope elect And until next time uh, Once again I want to give all praise On and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Rahawah Kakwadash Double honors to the apostles And the elders of Great Millstone 
that continue to rule very well. And uh, shalom and peace and safety. Salutations to the whole elect. That's uh, also doing the same things in our faith, truth, sincerity, and spreading his ministry and his gospel to the other members of the whole elect. And uh, with that, I'm going to say shalom.